you like to swear in the mayor first or sure the council people? Or Let's go with the mayor first. All right. We are going to uh, swear in all the elected officials this evening before we start the meeting officially. We're going to start with uh, uh, Councilman Manel, who is going to become Mayor Manel. I'll read you the oath and then you can just say, I do. Okay. I, Donald L. Manel, do hereby affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of Ohio and the Charter of the City of Astoria, Ohio, and that I will faithfully, honestly, and impartially discharge the duties of the office of mayor according to the best of my ability and understanding. So help me God. I do. You can sign here, please. do hereby affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of Ohio and the Charter of the City of Astoria, Ohio, and that I will faithfully, honestly, and impartially discharge the duties as President of City Council according to the best of my ability and understanding, so help me God. I will. Right here, please. order that they were on the ballot. <laughs> oh, I thought you probably went order. by age or something. <laughs> no, I was not. Ready? I, Gregory Joseph Cassidy, do hereby affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of Ohio and the Charter of the City of Fostoria, Ohio, and that I will faithfully, honestly, and impartially discharge the duties of a member of City Council according to the best of my ability and understanding. So help me God. I do. Right here, please. Oh. I was going to get <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want you to embarrass yourself. No. Well, that'd be real new here. <laughs> Shut your recorders off, guys. Please. I, Braden A. Hall, do hereby affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of Ohio and the Charter of the City of Foster, Ohio, and that I will faithfully, honestly, and impartially discharge the duties of a member of City Council according to the best of my ability and understanding. So help me God. I do. hereby affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of Ohio and the Charter of the City of Astoria, Ohio, and that I will faithfully, honestly, and impartially discharge the duties of a member of City Council according to the best of my ability and understanding. So help me God. Thank you very much. 
I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, we do have Father Hogemeyer here this evening. If you don't mind coming up and giving us an invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for your goodness to us and for the privilege of being called to know, love, and serve you. Thank you for the city of Astoria as it exists to enhance the life of each citizen. Thank you for the service of Mayor Keckler and all of our civil servants of the city who have finished their terms of office. We pray for all of our civil servants beginning a new term of office, elected or appointed. In particular, we pray for Don Minnell as he steps forward to serve as our new mayor. Grant him great wisdom to discern each effort for the common good. Heavenly Father, may you be glorified in Mayor Minnell's service and the work of all of our new and returning civil servants in Fostoria. Please grant citizens of Fostoria all the grace we need to live virtuously for your glory in this new year and for the upbuilding of each citizen. All this we ask in Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Second. Second by Podak. And Brady, if you just abstain from this one. Uh, the clerk, would you call the roll, please? Podak? Yes. Cassidy? Yes. Baker? Yes. Brady? Or, oh, sorry. Call? Abstain. M M M Mendoza? Yes. Lake? Yes. All right, the minutes have been approved. Um, there will be no reports of committees this evening because we have not appointed committees yet for this term in office. Um, we'll move into the reports of officers. Mr. Mayor, do you have a report for us in the seven minutes that you've served as, <laughs> as mayor? I wish I did, but I do not. But I just would like to thank the uh, electorate for electing me, and I hope that I can uphold the duties and the expectations of the public. Thank you. We will move into the director of law. No report tonight, thank you. And director of finance. No report. All right. Um, we will go into the public portion. Um, we do have one person that Tyson has requested to speak, so if you'd like to come up and address council. Deb Tyson. Um, and I just wanted to thank everyone for last year and moving forward. Uh, we can do better things, but. I have wrote a letter to the editor in the Review Times about our uh, township meeting that we're having a continuation this coming Monday at the Arcadia Fire uh, Station at 7 p.m. And um, I would also reached out to the Army Corps of Engineers all the way out to Buffalo, New York, and have not heard back from them. But I did get some really great news from EPA. Normally we only get one division of EPA to speak when they come to town. And I had said that was not acceptable when I started this. And they have gotten all three. The surface water, groundwater, and air to meet and it's going to be at Stacy's place in February. And they gave me the thing before it got released. So 
I'm happy to say that it looks like we're starting a new year the right way. Thank you. And that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. All right. The uh, meeting is now open to any other members of the public that wish to address council. Um, all we ask is that you provide your name, address, and limit your comments to three minutes or less. Uh, Leonard Skenecki, uh, North County Line Street, uh, here in town. Uh, on behalf of the, his I didn't know if Eric would be here tonight. On behalf of the Historical Society, um, I want to thank uh, Eric for all of the cooperation we received uh, from the city over the years. Uh, Eric did a terrific job, and uh, we are grateful for that. And we also want to wish Don Manel uh, all the best, particularly since we're neighbors. Uh, the North Street Museum is right across from where Don lives, and uh, so thank you very much and good luck. Story of City Council, uh, Commissioner Tyler Schuff here from the Seneca County Commissioner's Office. Just uh, very humbled to be here. Um, glad to be here to see the new council members take office and our new mayor. Um, very, very proud of everybody. Um, you have a very important job in front of you. So um, anything that we can do in the Commissioner's Office to help you guys, um, we're in this together. So you have a big job and a big duty ahead of you. So let's make 2024 a great year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no other members of the public, we will uh, go into the miscellaneous portion of our meeting, which probably will take some a little bit of time this evening. Uh, I have four candidates on the slate for the filling of the open seat left vacant in the third ward by the uh, election of uh, Mayor Manel. Uh, this evening, the four people I have who have pre-registered for this position are as follows. In order of alphabetical order, Alexander Brickner, Sue Lehman, Michael Thomas, and Renee Vogel Song. Uh, I, are you, is any of them not present this evening? Is there any other person in this room that, from the third ward, that wishes to be a candidate for this position? Seeing none, we will move into the process that we've set out for this. Um, we currently have these four candidates. Um, in a moment, I'll ask these four candidates to go into the hallway. Um, we'll shut the door. Um, you guys can be comfortable on the benches outside, and one at a time, um, we will ask them to come in and to introduce themselves, provide some sort of opening statement. Um, typically, we ask them to provide their addresses. You may do that this time when you come in to speak. Um, but I have confirmed through the Seneca County Board of Elections that all four candidates are viable residents of the third ward and our electors according to the um, charter of the city of Bostoria. Um, we will then have a question and answer portion for members of council to ask questions and seek answers from the potential candidates. And then that person will be allowed to make a concluding statement. We will ask that person to go back out in the hallway, bring the next person in, and we'll do that all four times. Upon completion of that process, um, council may do one of three things, essentially. Um, we can go immediately into a motion for a vote at that time. We can um, use a second portion, which is go into executive session for a discussion uh, for personnel matters, come out and then vote, bearing in mind that we cannot make straw polls or anything like that back in executive session. That is not permitted by the state of Ohio. It is merely for discussion. The third thing that we could do is we could ask for a five to 10 minute caucus by motion. Um, and then after that caucus period is over, uh, we can come back and make a vote. Um, we will vote, and if there's a majority after the first round, we will accept that person as a council member. Um, we will conclude then the meeting of that of today with other miscellaneous business, and whoever is selected for that position will be sworn in at the beginning of the next council meeting, very much like most of us were sworn in tonight. Are there any questions from council members before we begin? 
All right, so at this time, would all four candidates, except for Alexander Brickner, uh, please go in the hallway. Alexander Brickner here. Does that make that easier? <laughs> you want to get Sue Lane and ask her to come in? Sure. Um, last call for Alexander Brickner. All right. My name is Sue Lehman, 251 West Tippin Street, and I present myself to you this evening um, because I'm interested in filling the position that Don Manel is vacating for the Ward 3 Council position. Um, just briefly, I had been contemplating this for a little while, um, less enthusiastically on the onset, but felt that there was a civic duty. Did not expect there to be four candidates, um, which I think is very commendable. So whether I'm selected tonight or one of the other candidates, I wish them lots of luck if I'm not selected. I think that is fantastic that we have that kind of interest within our community. Um, as I said early on, I was less than enthusiastic. I've always followed local uh, government at a arm's length. I follow, um, I fortunately because you're, you're um, taping the um, meetings, I've been able to watch them remotely afterwards. And then as I became more interested, I started coming to some meetings and learning a little more about the process. And as my husband can tell you, the one thing that um, came out of that was I became more enthusiastic. And the reason that is, is that I concluded that my background, which many of you may not know, um, is government. I uh, was a governmental accountant for the majority of my career. I'm now retired. Um, I was previously the treasurer of Australia City Schools. So governmental accounting is my background. Um, I feel very strongly about our financial position, um, the fact that we're in fiscal emergency, that I don't think it ever should have happened. And um, I, as I listened to meetings, I found that I had questions that arose from hearing uh, the conversations that were going on. And it's not because I'm smarter, but it's because I have experiences that make me raise those questions. And I believe some of those questions can lead to answers which will help us get out of fiscal emergency quicker. Um, the city's paying $30,000 a year for somebody from the Auditor of State's office to help us, which I think is completely unnecessary. Um, I think it's incredibly important that we get out of fiscal emergency as soon as possible so that those resources can be used for the betterment of our community. So that's a little bit about me and why I'm here tonight. Um, and I'm open to any questions that you may have for me. I take it, <clears throat> it's my impression anyhow, that you're very conservative. Fiscally carry, conservative. Yes. Yes. Carrying a surplus is not an excuse to throw it away or be careless. Um, no, never carelessly. We shouldn't be doing that in our households. We shouldn't be doing that within our government. However, I do believe that our community needs investment. That's not the same thing as spending money. Um, because of our fiscal situation, um, things have gone awry and we haven't invested in our infrastructure the way that we should have. Um, and so, again, I would like to see us get on the trajectory that we can forecast and see where we're at, know that we're on solid ground, and then start drawing out a five-year plan, for example. We should be operating on a five-year plan at a minimum. And that includes spending money. At the same time, we should be forecasting out so that we know that we're not, that we can sustain our commit, our financial commitments. 
just to answer that, um, I'm fairly new other than uh, two months, but we do have a five-year plan. There was a five-year plan previous to the one that was presented um, at the December meeting. So yes, it is a five-year budget plan. It's five years out. Um, and that was done with the help of the state of Ohio. And, and I think um, Mr. Handran will pretty much say that that was a great help to the city to have that. And the lady that does that for us has been the same person for quite some time. So yeah, there is a five-year plan. That's good. Thank you for correcting me on that. I wasn't correcting. I was <laughs> trying to give you some information. <laughs> And he'd be glad to hand that to you anytime. Yeah, I, I, you're I think my point is, is that I don't think we would have, had we been living by a five-year plan, would have not ended up in fiscal emergency to begin with. Correct. Because even if you're running out of money, you know, and then you make decisions about how you're going to address that before you find yourself in a situation where the state is looking over what you're doing. In essence, what we had was many situations on some several lofty projects. There were good projects, mm -hmm. and we got a tremendous amount of funding from the government to go forward with them. But the fact of the matter is we didn't have our share of the funding to put towards it. It's like somebody says, I'll sell you Rolls Royce, and you Stickers two hundred thousand dollars. I'll pay one hundred and fifty, and if you pay fifty thousand, it'll be yours. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the fifty thousand, you shouldn't buy it. Right. It's as, about as simple as I can portray what got us into this. Mm -hmm. When, as I recall, it was kind of a perfect storm. There were some state funds that were going away that you had had previously. You had the safer grant. Um, and when those, when you, when you spend federal funds on payroll, and then the funds go away, that it's on you. Um, so, so when you become reliant on federal funds, I'm very familiar with that because Fostoria schools <laughs> received a lot of federal funds, um, and that was something that we always had to look at, you know. And we talked about it with our board, you know. If those funds go away, and one year they did pull funds back. And we had to immediately account for how we were going to uh, continue those positions. So you've had to deal with the not so much public and private partnerships as public and public from the standpoint of school, state, federal. Yes. You know, and that money's never, never a promise. No. No, and particularly in Fostoria, because your school funding and your federal fund, federal programs are um, largely determined by your capacity to raise money locally. And because we are, um, we have some economic challenges, you know, we have a low income base, um, we received a lot, we, were, we received a lot of those federal funds. But a lot of them weren't matching. No. No. And that's what you're saying. Were part they of, were. Part but of our problem was matching. We kind of got a little... Correct. But we had a lot of positions that were paid from those federal funds. And one year in particular I can think of, you could never rely, you never knew what your federal funds were until June and your fiscal year starts July 1. So, you know, you're always on pins and needles because if you have to start paying 20 positions out of your general fund that you are paying out of uh, federal funds, that's gonna change your, your trajectory very quickly. I know your background is financials, mm -hmm. but what would you like to see improve here in Fostoria? Um, that's my strength. Um, I have a lot to learn <laughs> on other things that are, um, operational, but as a resident, um, I feel that we have some low-lying fruit. Um, there's a perception within the community that there's a lack of transparency. Um, I don't believe that there's an intent by anyone here 
um, to be less than transparent. But um, I think we've done the same thing for a long time and not really looked at um, how we can change some of the things we do so that we can just naturally be more transparent. Uh, some of that could be done with an updated website and just putting monthly reports out there. Um, I don't think people should have to ask for a public record. If it's something that's generated every month and it's of public interest, you can put it out there for them to see. Um, your minutes could be up to date. Your ordinances could be up to date. Those things are not up, the ordinances in particular, I know, are not up to date on, on the website. So I don't think those are intentional, but I think that's some low-lying fruit that the, the community feels that there are things being hidden from them. And I think the best way to address that is just be open and have those things readily available. Um, so I think we can change the way the community sees how city operates just by, by changing some of the way we do things. Um, I think our water quality is an ongoing issue. It's not something I know anything about. Um, I share Mr. Podek's concerns about our water source running so close to uh, Sunny Farms. In fact, when you don't remember how many feet you said it was, but I took that back and my husband and I started talking about it and got the map out and we were like, that is really close. I mean, it's always been a concern, but when you consider that source is so close to that, um, that concerns me. Um, I think that our water quality, while I feel it is safe, um, does need, we need some work there. I don't, and I don't know the answers to that. We could have the best water in the world, but if the, if the transporting of it is a problem, you know, the, the piping that is a problem, you, how it's getting to residents' homes um, could be an issue. I don't know, those are things I've got to be educated on. I know I have a lot to learn in regard to that. Um, but I think it is, it is something that the community wants answers to. Um, and it's my understanding that that's one, the, the water fund is one thing that's keeping us out of moving out of fiscal emergency. Um, I don't think that the community's ready to take an increase in water rates, if that's the answer. Um, I think we need to look for other solutions. I have some ideas around that. Um, Again, we talked about infrastructure. I will know better after I see your five-year plan, you know, what that looks like. But um, I'd like to see a, a long-range plan as far as our street repair. Um, and I think those are my primary things that I feel are pressing the community. Any other questions for Mrs. Lehman? Did you want to make any other final thoughts before? No, I thank you for your time. And again, I, whoever you select, I commend everybody for stepping up and, and wish you all a lot of luck. It's a thankless job. It is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I might thank you, but there's a lot of people who will not. <laughs> so. for your time. Thank you very Thank you. much. Um, would you mind sending Michael Thomas to okay. please? Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Thomas. Good evening. Um, we're just going to ask you to make an um, introduction of yourself, some sort of opening statement. Council will then ask you uh, questions that they may have. And then we'll ask you to make any closing remarks, and that'll be the whole process. All right. My name is Michael Thomas. I live at 338 West High Street. I've lived in Fall Story all my life. Some of you I know, some of you I don't. Um, and I've never done this, so I'm really not sure what to say, to be honest with you. Um, Mr. Bunnell, congratulations on becoming a mayor. Thank you. I 
I've seen the open seat when you were elected mayor and hope to work with you to see what else, see what you bring to the table. Um, I'd like to see to keep moving in the direction that Mayor Keckler started. The downtown revitalization is really good. And I, that's all I got right now. Would you consider yourself conservative financially? I like to think so. I like to look at both sides of it because there's always two sides to every story, two outcomes. For every action, there's a greater reaction, so you gotta look at the reaction you're gonna get. Um, yeah, I, did, I mean, it's depending on the situation. I guess would be the best way to answer that. What kind of special skills would you bring to the table? What, through work experience or education, um, what would you offer? I do have a associate's degree in business. I'm currently a member of the Masonic Lodge, and I've been there for six years. I've been the secretary for five. So when it comes to keeping things in order, I'm pretty good at that. Um, I grew up in the city. I know a lot of people in the city. Most of you know my parents. They've owned businesses in town. I've owned a business in town. Um, I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty. You know, I'll do what, what's needed for the betterment of the city. And I'm a quick study. The best way to answer that question, I'm a quick study. What qualities do you think it takes to be a good councilman? Honesty, being dependable, being accountable. Um, the ability to get to know the community, know the people you're representing, the ability to work with other people to get to see that the job gets done. Um, father owned Thomas Monogramming. They did it for 15, 16 years. And I ran a landscaping business from 05 to 09. say in closing before we I just after speaking with the two other candidates out in the hallway however this may go like I said congratulations Mr. Manel and I think you've got three good candidates so it's going to be an interesting night for you for y'all and thank you for your time and thank you for putting up in my stammering a little bit but and have a good evening thank you Mr. Thank Thomas you. and would you uh, have Mr. Vogelsong come in, please. Yeah. Good evening, Renee. Hello. And for the ones that don't know me, Renee Vogelsong, I'm 702 East High. I just, uh, I was going to make a speech on paper, I decided not to. I'm going to give you me. Um, 
I, I would like to bring the city back. I mean, we, we've only been here 12 years, but we're proud to be a foster even though know, it's only been 12 years. Would I like to have been more? Yeah, hey, I'd like to see what it was before. Um, but I did. So that's behind. And we need to move forward. Um, there's been a lot of good progress. There's been ups and downs in the 12 years. We've seen some good things happen. But they need to be more. And there needs to be more positivity in with the people. We need to bring the Fostorians in. Give them a voice. I like listening to them. I like hearing what they say. A lot of times when I come in here and speak, it's because I've been hearing from somebody. They've been telling me things, the other ones that, and wanting me to be a voice. Well, I'm here. I'd like to be the voice. I'd like to uh, bring the, the third ward up, get the people involved, um, make little things. If, it, it don't have to really cost the city a lot. There's ways to do crowdfunding from your areas from each area, if you want, or as a city as a whole. Um, and I got plenty of ways in my mind that this could be done. Um, I just want to bring it out better. I want to see things happen, see things better, see uh, more positivity, like I say. And I'd actually like to see one thing really brought up, and that's to bring in the neighborhoods on a neighborhood watch system again. I heard it was here a number of years ago. Um, where it went, I don't know. I have no clue. I'd like to find out, maybe dig deeper in it, and get that back in. So the neighbors can watch out for each other more instead of having the blinders. There's a number of cameras on all, almost all the houses got rings. Nobody wants to use them. Something happens in your neighborhood, we don't see nothing. We don't know nothing. Let's bring them back. Uh, I'm sure we need, we got a decent crowd here from a lot of times I see it in here. A lot of times there's just a handful of people. Uh, this is something, bring the people in here. If they got a complaint, bring them in. But let's talk them into, bring the complaint in, let's bring in a, a way to fix it. Also, if you're going to complain, tell us what we can do better to make it right. And that's what I want to try to bring into it. I don't know what else you want to hear from me. Uh, I got a lot of ideas, a lot of good positive thoughts. So, like I say, I've only been here the 12 years. But the 12 years, I'm speaking for myself and for my wife. Uh, going on 25 years, and we both enjoy it. Otherwise, we'd have been long gone. Because <laughs> our family's all over 60 miles away from us. But we enjoy. So. Hey, I just want to thank you for attending as many meetings as you have and bringing up questions and concerns about what goes on in the city. On, you know, High Street, Fremont Street, whatever. Um, hopefully, at some point, you know, as an administration, we'll be able to get those addressed. Um, but just being here is, you're one of a handful. So I appreciate that coming in and, you know, keeping informed, asking questions, finding out firsthand what's going on. Thank you. And thank you. And, and to go with that, a lot of times I couldn't because of my job situation. I've been in the trucking industry uh, for the most part since 1981. Um, but this last 18 and a half years, I've been in it pretty heavy uh, to where I couldn't be all the time. But that is changing and it's changing as of now. So I echo Bob's comments. <clears throat> and just so you know, there's research being done on things that you brought up at the last meeting as far as the dog issue. I think well, there will be sometime after the first year we'll probably be getting heavily involved in correcting some of those things. Thank you. I have another question. This is more specific, but uh, is there any special skill set that you could bring to council? 
mainly a lot of thoughts, a lot of uh, being public. Um, um, we do have the social media aspect going on pretty heavy. Um, but it's uh, more of being, being out there, being the voice, being ears along with the voice. Because God gave me two ears, one mouth. But he also gave me the two eyes to go with it so I can also see the stuff that's going on. So, you know, I, I got more of that. I mean, am I big on, on financing? No. I, I'll tell you that right now. But I do know it. I mean, but I'm not a big, you know, finance person. Otherwise, I'd be uh, in a different business than what I was in. Uh, but, uh, you know, so I mean, I can bring some to that table. But that table is not my strong suit. So my strong suit's more in the public eye, the more of the grasping. People won't be positive about Fostoria from outside of Fostoria unless we project collectively a positive attitude from within. Right. Yes. And I'm not saying within the city building, I'm saying this community as a whole. Exactly. And that's where I'm going with that. That's who I listen to. That's who I'm hearing is the public themselves. So, yes. so. Uh, one final thought, question, whatever. If you were not appointed to this open position, I am going to presume that you're not going to go away. You're still going to I guarantee you. Whether I get that or not, you're going to see my face in here. <laughs> I mean, I'm, no. Uh, would I like to have it? Yes, I would. Um, but I'd like whoever gets it, I hope they do the right thing also and keep going forward instead of staying neutral or going backwards. That's not going to do anybody any good. So, but no, if I wouldn't get it, I'm still going to be sitting back here and coming up here and voicing, like I had said in one of the other times, I'm, I'm not an ostrich to put my head in the sand. I'm a giraffe, gets my head up here, and I speak out. I've always appreciated your positive attitude. I mean, it's always been great. I've only been on a short tour, but you always had that positive attitude. By the, by in 12 years, what strengths have you seen that you've seen in Australia that we can build on? You know, it's hard to really say any one strength. I mean, uh, because things has come and gone so much. Things has changed. Uh, we've lost businesses, but we've had more mom and pop businesses come back in. Uh, the COVID really, really hurt. Um, and but to see the mom and pops come in. That's the strengths we need. We need to see it in, inside the town, not outside somewhere. Um, but yeah, we lost, like I said, we lost some big places, Kmart, the, uh, the two big main grocery stores. But you know what? It didn't stop us. We're still here. We got a few nice little stores in town that we can still go to. Are they as big and good as you know, maybe not as what some people would think. I think they are. You know, I, you can still go up there and get a good coffee. You can go up there and buy what you need, mercantile. I mean, so there is positive that comes with every negative. So I hope that answered what she's looking yes. for. Yes, yes. Any other questions for Renee? All right, this time, you, if you'd like to make any closing comments before we ask you to let the other two back in. Mm, nothing other than I want to thank all of you for everything that goes on. Um, I know I uh, sort of messed up at the last meeting, and I didn't thank Mayor Keckler at the time on the mic. I will thank him afterwards for his service. Uh, but I want to uh, thank you for being there and, you know, uh, well wishes, well wishes all the way through and same way with the rest of you. Well wishes on 
all your positions. So I guess that's where we can leave it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Would you mind opening the door and let the other two candidates sure, well, come back in? At this time, we have um, three basic options. Um, I'm glad that I don't have to make a choice this evening like the six of you do. Um, I know one thing that Foster is going to win regardless of which of the three are picked. Um, there's three great choices this evening. Um, but as a council, you have a, a decision to make at this point. You can make a motion to vote immediately. You could make a motion to go into executive session personnel um, issues, and then we'd come out and vote at that time. You could ask for a five to ten minute caucus, and then also then at, that, at the end of that, come back and vote. <coughs> and it's really up to the six of you at this point. I mean, there's this fourth option. You can have a discussion right here if you'd like as well. I make a motion that we go into executive session. I'll second that. Okay. So we have a motion by Cassidy and a second by Tom Lake to go into executive session for personnel matters, considering the appointment of a public employee or official. Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Podak? Yes. Cassidy? Yes. Baker? Yes. Hall? Yes. Mendoza? Yes. Lake? Yes. All right, we will go into executive session and there will be business. <laughs> Second by Cassidy to come out of the executive session. Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Podak? Yes. Cassidy? Yes. Baker? Yes. Paul? Yes. Mendoza? Yes. Lake? Yes. We are back in session at 7 05. I move that we take a vote on the opening for city council for the three candidates that were presented. Second. We have a motion by Podak to vote on candidates, and second by Mendoza. Clerk, please call the roll. Podak? Yes. Cassidy? Yes. Baker? Yes. Hall? Yes. Mendoza? Yes. Lake? Yes. All right, this time I will ask the clerk to call a roll of each council member. At that time, you will give us the name of the person you would like to endorse for this position. Uh, we will vote until there is a majority of, of a person. Councilperson Podak? Layman? Councilperson Cassidy. Layman. Councilperson Baker. Sue Layman. Councilperson Hall. Sue Layman. Councilperson Ka Mendoza. Renee Vogelsong. Councilperson Lake. Layman. Uh, Sue Layman has become the Ward 3 Council person. So you will be sworn in at the beginning of the next meeting on the 16th of January at 6 p.m. Um, the other candidates, thank you for your time tonight. Um, I truly believe that Foster Ray could not have lost by any one of you three being selected in that position. So congratulations and thank all of you for, for your participation this evening. Is that possible, Sue? Sure. Sue Layman, when we finish, can I see you so I can get some information from you? Sure. Excellent. We will um, continue into miscellaneous business. <clears throat> Um, does anyone have miscellaneous? I know the mayor does. I have a few things. Go ahead, Mr. Mayor. Mr. President, I would like to thank Natasha Bitt for her service on the Seneca County Health Board and appoint Nate Heiser for a five-year term to replace her. Can we do all? Yes, please. I would like to thank Jim Schreck for his 20 plus years chairing the City of Australia Planning Commission and appoint Galen Dillon to replace him. 
I would like to reappoint John Hollingsworth to the Planning Commission. I would like to thank Jackie Jordan for her service on the Zoning Board of Appeals and replace her with Jane Wagner. I would like to reappoint Jay Bruff to the Board of Zoning Appeals. And I would like to thank Josh, Josh Clark for his service as Public and Safety Service Director and appoint Eric Keckler to replace him. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, would Council like to make a motion to accept those appointments? So moved. Second. We have a motion by Cassidy and second by Lee to accept Mayor Manel's appointments. Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Hodak? Yes. Cassidy? Yes. Baker? Yes. Hall? Yes. Mendoza? Yes. Lake? Yes. I'm not sure that that was necessary, but you have our vocal support for those appointments. Thank you. Do you have any other miscellaneous, Mr. Mayor? No, we do not. Any other council members have any miscellaneous this evening? We're not quite off the hook yet, though, because I have a whole list of stuff that we need to get done. Um, first of all, I'd like to announce that we will be continuing to meet on the first and third Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Um, as we have been doing for several years, it seems to be working out, and I don't see any need to change that at this time. Um, we do need to probably decide on a president pro temp of council, someone that would sit up here in case of my absence. Um, that motion would come from the six of you. Um, it could wait another meeting if you want to. It doesn't have to. Um, I do plan on being at the next meeting, but I can't guarantee I will be here, but I do plan on being here. Um, Mr. President, sure. I would move that we appoint Tom Lake to that one. Okay, do we have a second? Second. All right, we have a uh, motion by Podak and a second by Mendoza for Councilperson Lake to be the President Pro Tem. Clerk, would you call the roll? Podak? Yes. Cassidy? No. Baker? Yes. Paul? Yes. Mendoza? Yes. Lake? Abstain. Congratulations, Councilperson Lake. You are now the President Pro Tem. Um, that might wind up leaving you up in this seat like it has me, so uh, I'm not planning on going anywhere, Mr. Podak. <laughs> um, we may have some more committee appointments to make at a future meeting. We just need to kind of um, look, at, look at some things and we will announce committees at the next meeting. Um, I should ask uh, Clerk Tammy, would you like to retain your position as clerk since it's a new term? I would like to keep doing this job, yes. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Um, so with that said, I had um, a few things um, that have been talked about. Um, we would start seeing meeting minutes within 48 hours of, of the meeting conclusion. So basically by Friday morning gotcha. after a meeting, we would like to see um, council um, Agendas, I'm trying to find my notes, sorry. The Friday before a Tuesday meeting. Is that gonna be okay with not getting all the legislation? Yeah, we would just add any legislation. We would like to see ordinances being available as they are written um, and available to the council members so they can peruse them, start discussing with constituents and try to avoid having last minute additions unless they are absolute emergencies that do have to be passed for scheduling reasons or other emergencies, um, which is kind of how it's done now, but I just wanted to say that out loud um, for transparency. And I think that is everything in my notes. Any other miscellaneous or open? I have a donation to the city. It's a big 12 month calendar. You roll it out, put it on the wall, and it can go to the mayor's office, it can go to the safety service, it can go to the executive in the middle office, but it's there and hopefully they can plan ahead a little further and we don't have near the emergencies that we have. Because it's, I realize that there's finance ones since we get those and there's some other things that happen, but um, I think we pretty much know, you know, eight weeks down the road what's coming. If we don't, evidently we're not paying attention. So I will donate that and Mayor Manel can see fit to put that where it needs to be. And it's erasable, so <laughs> things can change. Okay. Any other miscellaneous? All right. Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to adjourn this evening. So moved. Second. 
We have a motion by Cassidy, a second by Lake to adjourn. Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Podak? Yes. Cassidy? Yes. Baker? Yes. Hall? Yes. Mendoza? Yes. Lake? Yes. We are adjourned at 713.